Now, what are the suturing techniques? First of all, always clean the flap before you start suturing. So irrigate. I like irrigation. Like keep that flap clean, remove everything. Then place the flap in a desired position. No tension. The release of the flap continue if you see that there's tension. Enter the tissues always at the right angles so that you have a maximum thickness. Stay at least three millimeters away from the incision margin so you don't pull the suture through. So give it a little bit more length. And do not place the knots over the incisions because it will kind of thicken everything and you get more bacterial accumulation. So put them on keratinized gingiva. And closure with no tension. So without tension. Really important in these areas. Now, here's like a view which you can see. I have two sutures that I use techniques. One for me is for the crest, really important and what I use all the time. It's the horizontal mattress closure. So you're coming in with a suture. I always use the same dense PTFE suture. Go to the buckle, go to the lingo, then return to the lingo and go to the buckle. And that gives me that beautiful horizontal mattress which moves it coronally. Then between each mattress, I put one single interrupter. When you look at the videos um, that I have, um, you know, like posted and on the, in the library, you'll see this type of suturing technique all the time. It's straightforward, very efficient, very consistent. Then the second closure will be the vertical incisions if you use them. And those just need to be single interrupted sutures. Again, same suture, or if the tissues become really thin in the papilla, I use maybe a nylon, a 4-0, I can use a 5-0, I can even use a 6-0 with smaller needles. So it just depends on the thickness of the tissue. So these are my two techniques that I have. Cresto incision closure with a mattress, evert the flap, and then vertical incisions like single interrupted sutures. Here's a uh, photograph of the horizontal mattress, and you can see it keeps the tension away from the flap edges, and it gives you flap eversion really important after grafting, very important after implants. And it's always in conjunction with interrupted sutures because you want the flaps, which are now everted a little bit, to be compressed together. So that's really important. Single interrupted are uh, used to secure flap location. And, you know, especially when you do uh, horizontal mattress, you place them in between the horizontal mattress. And if you do like any kind of uh, tissue level implant placement, and you have an abutment there or an implant there, then you just need two single interrupted, one mesial, one distal. It makes it so simple. A typical example would be a one-stage molar, lower molar. Place the implant, you made a nice flap, buccolingual, then you replace the flap, and you just put one suture mesial, one suture distal, and you're done. Here's the um, suturing technique shown uh, in, again, in detail. On the left photograph, you see the horizontal mattress suture, really like moving everything coronal. And in the right photograph, you see the single interrupted suture. So really nice how that closes and seals the flap. Now you can imagine looking at that flap on the right side, no tension, first of all, really loose tissue. And with those two mattress techniques, with this suture material, you did everything you had to do. It's sealed. So now with good healing of the patient, good vascularization, you know, they come back two weeks later for suture removal and it looks clean and it looks closed. Here's another one. So that's the horizontal mattress on the mandible, right? Again, it's placed on the buckle, the knots. It's about three, four millimeters apical. And then in between each, you have a single interrupted, right? So that makes it really nice and controllable. And again, that's enough. You don't need to do more. I placed here probably six or eight sutures max. And here's another one. Um, you can see that the blue sutures are always the nylon, a little bit finer than the PTFE, so I use that for the vertical incisions very often. The white ones are really for crestal and for thicker tissue in the vertical incisions. Now, what kind of suture material types do we use? And that's the, uh, we're getting slowly to the end of the, um, this course, is you have to think about non-resorbable, for implant placement, and I always use the dense PTFE cytoplast or nylon, and I use now the resorbable ones. They are really good. 
Um, and then if you use for implant uncovering or when you do those mucogingival procedures, I showed you a couple of photographs, we use a PGA, so it's polyglycolic, or polyglyconate, which is really very, very, again, atraumatic. And resorba is a good example of that. So two different types of sutures, one resorbable, one non-resorbable, and cytoplast, really the number one suture material I use, nylon as a backup for thin tissue, and then for resorbable, I usually use today the polyglyconate because they're so clean and they're monofilament. Uh, here you can see the recommended suture, it's PTFE. Um, dense PTFE is cytoplast. You see in the photograph a Gore-Tex suture, also excellent material, just harder to get by and a little bit more costly. They're non-resorbable, really important, but super, super inert, so no tissue inflammation. So if you haven't started using these cytoplast sutures, uh, these are really the ones we use for implant surgery and grafting. Um, 14 days is the suture removal appointment, and you see really no tissue inflammation. That's, that's the, the really nice thing. And they loosen up. They do not loosen up either if you make knots. Oh, by the way, I use four knots on these sutures, not three. Uh, they are a little bit more difficult to remove sometimes because the tissue likes the material so much. So what I do, as you can see, I always keep a little longer end to it so there's no problem with removing them. Nylon. Um, has a little bit of memory, but again, the new ones, the glyconate from Resorba, they're kind of almost like a straight uh, line. It's like a straight hair, so really nice. non resorbable again, very inert, no tissue inflammation. And these materials are also getting softer. So the glycon is really soft, and of course, it's much smaller. So it's a good material to have. Then for resorbable, um, that's kind of more for soft tissue work, mucogingival work, uncovering work. So you can see that here, we have a lot of resorbable sutures on the market. I personally don't use gut or chromic gut. Too unreliable, it loosens too fast, and it has a lot of inflammation, so we don't use that. The glycolon, we have, um, kind of, that's my preferred suture today. That's the uh, resorba suture, and really is monofilament. It's strong enough, it stays in place for about two, two to three weeks, and really keeps this, uh, all this material in there. Suture sizes, I usually use um, 2.0 to 4.0 for PTFE. The thicker ones really for the big flaps, the thinner ones for an average flap. And then for nylon, I go a little bit smaller, maybe 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, you know, in that area. Just remember that <clears throat> the smaller sizes have, of course, much less tensile strength, so they can break easier. But again, the materials are getting better. Like, for, for example, the glycolon 4.0, I, I really haven't had it break with normal tensile strength. So that's really good. So, um, you know, materials are improving with time. Um, <clears throat> needles, I always do the 3 eighths. That's the most commonly used material. Um, it gives me a nice quick turn. Um, and if I need to make the 3 eighths into a half, I can do that too. I just bend it a little bit. So 3 eighths is my most used uh, and most commonly used needle. Uh, I always use reverse cutting needles, um, really good for keratinized tissue, even good for like you know, mucosa. They prevent really tearing of the flap and go pass easily through uh, the keratinized tissue. So that's my uh, preferred one. Then needle holders. Um, you know, you probably have needle holders in your office. Um, I would recommend you, if you don't have Castrovejo like you see in this photograph, get those. Typical example is Euphredi. Uh, very, very good, long-term stable. If you have any problems with them, they'll always repair them for you. Uh, they have a good warranty system, so that's really good. But other companies, of course, have also good materials. But Castorio is so precise, so you can't use those old-fashioned clickers anymore. And then here's your uh, suturing knot, and actually I was uh, commenting about this already. So I recommend four turns uh, per knot. Um, and I recommend four knots. So you have kind of this opportunity to go, for example, two clockwise, one counterclockwise, and one clockwise. Doesn't make a big difference how you do it, as long as like you have this clockwise and counterclockwise going with each other, and like you know, it really produces it nicely. So. 
with this, I have now uh, finished my uh, course on uh, uh, you know basic fundamentals in uh, patient selection and in surgical uh, treatment. So we did incisions, we did flap design, we did anatomy, uh, we did like uh, the complications that we see. We saw some materials used, and of course the suture materials. So hopefully uh, all this together will help you to start the surgical procedure. Good luck.